The 3.22x EPTU test server has been available for a while now, and it has undergone significant changes to master modes. While master modes have generally enhanced the game experience, the latest iteration of this system represents a step back, reintroducing many of the problems that master modes were initially designed to address. At the time of this recording, I believe master modes are in their worst state yet. Failing to achieve their intended goals of accessibility, closer combat, team-focused gameplay, ship variety, and more focused visceral combat. While previous versions managed to accomplish most of these objectives, the latest iteration falls short in many regards. Let's start by examining the positive aspects of the newest version before delving into its shortcomings. The Good CIG has been experimenting with reducing the effectiveness of Aim Assist currently present in the game. It's important to note that Aim Assist and Enhanced Stick Precision, or ESP, are distinct concepts. Aim Assist in this game acts as a form of magnetism, nudging shots closer to the target when aimed in its vicinity. Overall, I support the reduction of Aim Assist as strong auto-aim undermines the skill-based nature of gameplay particularly in a game where evasion is a defining characteristic of certain ship classes. While I personally prefer minimal aim assist, I recognize its importance in smoothing gameplay, enhancing accessibility, and maintaining parity between controller inputs. The reduction of aim assist has been a positive change, and I'm eager to see how CAG continues to refine it. Additionally, the inclusion of larger ships such as the Constellation and Hammerhead as well as the adjustment of size 5 repeaters to provide proper velocity, have been welcome additions. Various tweaks aimed at making ships like the Vanguard more viable further contribute to the positive aspects of the latest version. The Bad Unfortunately, some adjustments have been made that reintroduced many of the negative gameplay aspects that Master Mo's aimed to fix. Most notably, the extreme evasiveness of light fighters, gaming the pip, and drawn out combat. Gone are the close up and intimate team based encounters, replaced by a series of disjointed 1v1 skirmishes scattered throughout space. This is particularly evident in matches that often drag on until the 15 minute mark, rather than concluding when one team accumulates the required points for victory. Players are finishing matches with fewer damage dealt fewer kills, and lower scores overall. It's crucial to emphasize the significance of an 8v8 match taking a full 15 minutes to conclude, highlighting the inability of players to accumulate points through damage. This situation perfectly illustrates the negative and monotonous aspects of Star Citizen Space Combat. In the initial versions of Master Modes, combat was quick, gritty, and intense, with teamwork such as defensive maneuvers, peeling, and tanking damage for teammates being commonplace. However, that dynamic has shifted. Another concerning indication is that the majority of players have reverted to using the Gladius and exploiting its new higher strafe speeds to the fullest extent, essentially replicating the gameplay that made dislike from the onset. The buffed strafe speeds on light fighters, combined with the reduced weapon velocity and decreased aim assist, have created the same unexciting scenario reminiscent of the legacy flight model system in the live game. Simply put, it's not enjoyable. Multi-crew is still bad. The big ships still suck. Despite the videos from other content creators praising the greatness of larger ships like the Connie and Hammerhead, along with their turrets, such claims are absolutely disingenuous and a disservice to the players who haven't tested these themselves. As I mentioned in the bad section of this video, these larger ships are simply incapable of effectively fending off light fighters with their turrets, and they are truly only a threat to ships of similar size. The hype may lead you to believe that the big ships are finally ready to play, but the reality is far from it. They're bad. Big ships right now are once again easy prey for light fighters and are incapable of defending themselves. There's a supreme irony in the fact that a ship like the Hammerhead, designed to destroy light fighters, now require an escort just to fend off those very same ships. 
I've been on the EPTU and have been collecting this footage to demonstrate it to you. First, let's begin with the hammerhead. I believe this clip highlights the worthless turret reversal speed of the hammerhead. I'm struggling to keep up with a gladius, and I also can't aim my weapon up high enough to even hit him. This is awful, but yeah, I can't keep up with the guy. So in this demonstration, I'm just shooting at a stationary target. We're having basically a duel. He's trying to disable my turret through the hammerhead shields, and I'm just trying to blow him up. He's into Gladius. Stationary. I cannot hit him. And he's just plinking away at my turret. I'm on a recharge now. And... Yep. Okay, boom. I'm gone. Disabled. I lose. This demonstration is similar. This time it's against a Vanguard. It's a little bit closer, and it's a bigger target. And here, I'm actually making hits because the Vanguard is larger. Keep in mind, though, we're both stationary. We're trying to do the same thing. We're having a duel here to see who wins. I understand this is not like the most realistic, quote-unquote, scenario. But even if this turret cannot defeat a ship that's pretty large at range, game can't even land hits. There's something wrong here. So now I'm on cooldown. And you can also see that I'm struggling to see what my actual capacitor is because the UI just doesn't work for turrets. But now I just broke a shield, and I'm actually hitting him now. So we're still dueling. I'm getting some shots in on the hull. Keep in mind, it's a Vanguard. It's a bigger target. And boom, I lose anyway. Very cool. Now this was my personal favorite. So all I'm doing here is trying to hit the target while he's just slightly doing a corkscrew maneuver. And he's closing in on me. And he's doing it very slowly. I'm getting very few hits. This is the entire capacitor of a hammerhead. I can't even break his shields. So if I couldn't hit him stationary, I definitely can't hit him moving. This is embarrassing! But it's not just a hammerhead. The Connie has it a little better, but it's sure it still suffer. I want you to check out this gameplay and let me know what you think. So this one's pretty interesting. You can see here that I'm engaging, looks like, I don't know, the Connie or something. Anyway, we're fighting. Boom, right there, I get hit by these missiles and everything turns off. The whole ship powers down. Like the power plant got destroyed or something. That was like one or two missiles. This happens a lot in the Connie. So this sick little nerd is coming at me and we get up in this weird little turn fight, right? And I'm not expecting my main guns to really hit him. But if you look at what I'm doing, I'm doing everything in my power to maintain that, you know, to make sure that my top gunner has the best possible angle on him. I'm not even trying to get guns on. I'm trying to get his guns on. And even when I give him good shots like this, like nothing happens. This guy is in no fear of that turret whatsoever. No matter what I do. So this goes on for quite a while. I skipped a lot of it. And this is how it ends. Dum Dum runs into me and dies. Very well done. And here's another example of missiles disabling the ship. I take a few missiles. And my engines go down. My shield generator goes down. And the ship is just basically disabled. This happens numerous times. And they're like little missiles. So I'm not even getting shot at by like massive missiles. Very strange. Happens in Akani a lot. This ship is slightly better off than the Hammerhead due to its massive forward-facing firepower. And in general, I am happy with its size 2 turrets and do not think they require a buff to a size 3. However, they could use a significant traversal speed, range, and accuracy buff. Comically, as you've seen in the footage, this ship is also particularly easy to disable with a single size 1 missile. Every time it happened, I just had to shake my head and laugh, and it happened a lot. Anyone telling you multi-crew is fine right now is either lying or stupid, maybe both. 1 plus 1 equals 3. This equation isn't the result of me being a product of the American education system, but rather a design concept that proposes a vehicle which performs subpar on its own is dramatically increased in effectiveness when crewed. The rough idea, not the rule, is that if the vehicle requires two players to operate, it is roughly equivalent to three individual vehicles. This concept scales up the larger the vehicle and the more people it requires to fully operate, eventually acting like a force multiplier that a team can leverage and use to their advantage. A great example that most of you may understand is the Warthog from Halo. Alone, it is worthless and cannot do anything. However, with a gunner, you are able to work together as a unit and inflict a significant amount of damage on the enemy. There was never a shortage of people wanting to gun for warthogs in Halo. 
but once people get a taste of gunning a turret in Star Citizen, they'd probably rather do anything else. That becomes especially problematic when the idea is to eventually not just have gunners in our vehicles, but also engineers to control and work on systems. If 1 plus 1 equals 3 isn't comprehended and designed for now, it'll never work when crew size requirements grow in the future. That isn't to say that every ship must adhere to a harsh mathematical equation. That isn't realistic. The Vanguard and Connie, for example, have a tremendous amount of forward firepower and rely on the gunners to supplement and assist the pilot in accomplishing their goals. The Hammerhead, on the other hand, trades almost all offensive pilot power in order to rely upon the gunners. Using common sense and rational design, CIG can adapt this philosophy to make the experience far more rewarding for everyone who wants to participate in multi-crew gameplay. This may come as a shock to you, but not everyone wants to be a pilot. Not everyone wants to fly. Being a turret gunner is an absolutely viable and legitimate way to play, and it's about time turret gunners get the respect they deserve through game mechanics and design that acknowledge their existence. The best way to do that is to make them effective and deadly. Which brings us to the next topic. Deterrence isn't fun. The term deterrence is often thrown around when discussing feedback and design concepts. Some argue that the hammerhead should deter enemy fighters from getting close and be able to chase them away. However, I'm here to tell you that players do not want to merely deter enemies. They want to destroy them. They want to blow them up. Currently in the game, the best practical scenario is that you manage to chase off an enemy fighter who is too foolish to hold down strafe in his gladius, and he zooms off to recharge his shields. Sure, you deterred him, but why isn't he dead? He's not dead because these turrets simply act as a deterrent through damage, not their actual ability to destroy. Once again, players want destruction. Let me provide another example. At one point, I was heavily involved with the development of Planetside 2, where a certain group of developers designed anti-aircraft weapons to deter enemy aircraft from getting close to the ground battle instead of killing them outright. One AA unit could not single-handedly destroy an aircraft, despite the aircraft also being a single-seat vehicle. This led to two problems. Firstly, since deterrence isn't fun, nobody bothered to pull AA, resulting in aircraft farming ground units with impunity. Secondly, an organized outfit demanded that players pull AA, leading to an oversaturation of AA units on the field just to deal with enemy aircraft. Nobody was having fun in either scenario, except perhaps the aircraft farming the units on the ground and that one guy in AA out of 10 others lucky enough to get a kill. This example perfectly illustrates why people don't want to sit inside turrets in Star Citizen. It isn't effective, and thus, it isn't fun. To properly deter a single light fighter from approaching a hammerhead, you'd have to saturate the area with fire from seven gunners. That's seven gunners to reliably kill one light fighter. This isn't theoretical. This is reality, right now, in the game as it currently stands. If turrets are not a certain death up to a certain range, nobody will ever want to get in them, and you will have an entire playstyle that isn't viable for the game. Light fighters, once again, reign supreme. Ramming is too effective. During my time with the Connie, any smaller ship unable to, for whatever reason, get behind my guns and kill me would simply ram me. This became so problematic that the moment I pulled a Connie, players and light fighters would immediately come towards me and attempt to ram me. This usually resulted in both of us being destroyed. Why, again, would I want to pull a ship, put a crew in it, and only end up being rammed and killed by one clown and a light fighter? I wouldn't. Every time this happened, the random gunners that spawned in my ship would stop coming in and pull their own fighters. Ramming is stupid. It serves no purpose. Why does it have to exist? Why can't CIG just make it zero damage? It adds nothing positive to the game. 
Realism be damned. Use your sci-fi setting to magic up an explanation and say something like, shields collide and push each other away. Anything. I cannot believe that 10 plus years into development, ramming is still a thing and that some people are so stupid that they will actively defend it. Just get rid of ram damage. I don't even want little ships to blow up when they ram me because that'll just incentivize bigger ships to pancake smaller ones. Well, funny at first, that isn't a positive for the game. Remove ramming. Survivorship bias. I swear I'm not a disgusting Redditor. But in this case, I want to discuss a logical error known as survivorship bias. Survivorship bias is a type of sample selection bias that occurs when an individual mistakes a visible, successful subgroup as the entire group. In other words, survivorship bias occurs when an individual only encounters the surviving observations without considering those data points that didn't survive in the event. I believe this bias heavily influences feedback in Star Citizen particularly in the PvP and Master Modes department. We often hear from players who tolerate, master, and adapt to flawed systems, but not from those who opt out or quit. We rarely hear why they quit, what they hate, and what they dislike. The people arguing against Master Modes are a perfect example of this bias. They have endured, learned, and mastered the terrible Legacy Flight model doing everything in their power to influence and revert the new system to that flawed older one. We're not getting much feedback from the average person who quit the old system and why they did. We're also not getting feedback from people who tried EPTU, found it lacking, and left. Instead, we're hearing from those who enjoy the taste of rotten meat and will try to convince you why eating rotten meat is good. That's what the legacy system was. Rotten meat. And those who support the changes and poor gameplay in 3.22.1 are trying to convince you why you should enjoy rotten meat too. CIG isn't receiving the right feedback from the right audience. And why would they? Many have opted out a long time ago when they smelled the rotten meat because they're not foolish enough to stick around and consume it. Moreover, Whenever somebody discusses how unfun, bad, or inaccessible the old flight model was, they were immediately shut down by some individuals telling them to get good or just practice lol and publicly dismissing their claims. Why would they tolerate that and put up with it? So they don't. They don't provide feedback. They don't test. They just check out. Well, I'm not going to check out. I'm telling you right now that Master Modes are life or death for the product. And if this game cannot appeal to the average player, not below or above, but the average, it will struggle. If it cannot appeal to groups who want to work as a team, or players who want to do anything other than fly a light fighter, it will struggle. The feedback on Master Modes is heavily skewed towards those who enjoy the taste of garbage. I don't need to know the nuances of eating garbage to understand that it isn't good for me. That's why even things I strongly dislike, such as aim assist, I give a pass. It's better for the product. Better for accessibility and controller input parity. I have no ego attached to my skill. I want Star Citizen to be the best MMO game ever made, and I will fight against anything that I feel will prevent that from happening, including the heavily biased feedback from certain groups of players who enjoy certain styles of play. If a significant portion of your player base is trying something, deciding it isn't fun, and not coming back to play, you have a problem. A far bigger problem than what the dedicated minority of the player base enjoys. They are not the audience you have to appeal to you have to appeal to the ones who aren't playing past, present, and future. Conclusion 
3.22.1 is a massive step back and is reintroducing many of the old problems we've experienced with the legacy flight model. I don't feel compelled to play it at all, and I certainly don't enjoy it. I only did so out of obligation to the product and a desire to provide valuable feedback. Multi-crew ships still suck, light fighters reign supreme, and the obnoxious gaming mechanics such as pip wiggle are alive and well. While I'm sure some of these issues are slated to be addressed by CIG soon, I still feel it's important for me to give you, the viewer, whether you like me or not, the straight dope. Finally, I'd like to clarify that I do not think CIG listens to one particular group more than another. There are two very distinct camps in Star Citizen feedback, but I truly believe that the reality is that most players, the overwhelming majority, do not provide feedback or even really know what is going on. In the end, those players, Joe Casual, as I call them, are the most important customers and must be catered to for the product to be a success, since that will comprise the bulk of new players and the future revenue of the game. If that means stepping on the sensitive toes of the sweaties and the Care Bears, then so be it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm eager to read the get goods from the expert excrement excavators out there in the Star Citizen community.